West Palm Beach, more than 4,000 protesters turned out during a week of spirited and mostly peaceful demonstrations against the tragic killing of George Floyd. We'll be having nine minutes of silence for George Floyd. On Friday, protesters, mostly masked as a precaution against COVID-19 and mostly young, gathered outside City Hall where Mayor James met with them and answered their questions. Encouraging demonstrators to protest peacefully, the mayor told them protesting is only the first step toward effecting change. It's up to you to get the right people in office to support your positions. Because you can only march in the street so many times in order to have policies. You got to get the right elected officials in place. Mayor James also expressed his support for West Palm Beach police. Listen, my view is that you should view the police as allies and not adversaries when it comes to public safety. There are some bad apples there, I understand it. Uh, and, and, and my chief's job is to minimize and eliminate those bad apples. Police Chief Frank Adderley told protesters they can come to him anytime with their concerns. I am telling you, you got your citizen group, you want to have this discussion? Our doors open. When protesters called for West Palm Beach officers to march with them to help keep them safe, the chief himself started walking. And after a weekend of peaceful protests, the mayor announced some changes. The city is lifting its state of emergency and curfew, at least for now. And now, the flag outside City Hall flies at half staff in memory of George Floyd. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPV TV. At Howley's Diner on South Dixie Highway, car hops wearing masks and gloves are taking orders from people waiting outside in their vehicles. How are you guys today? When the bags of food are delivered, no money will be changing hands because this is part of an effort spearheaded by Howley's owner Rodney Mayo to help feed restaurant and hotel workers laid off during the COVID-19 pandemic. That includes 650 employees who work at his 17 area restaurants. Just to sit in a room and have to let 650 people go and then hear about their families of four and five children at home, it just, I, I just couldn't handle it. So Rodney decided to find a way to at least feed those who've been laid off and their families, whether they worked for him or not. He and his friends started the nonprofit Hospitality Helping Hands to collect cash donations and arrange for closed down restaurants to donate their perishable food. He hired a small kitchen staff to prepare the meals and encouraged laid off hospitality workers to volunteer to pack them up and deliver them to waiting cars. All right, I'll get you your five meals out, okay? It should just be a couple minutes, all right? They'd also received a $12,000 grant from the city of West Palm Beach. But with no end in sight to the COVID-19 crisis, Rodney tearfully appealed to the city commission for more. I was bombarded with questions of what do we do? Where do we go? Where do we find money? His appeal worked. The city commission is also going to get a resolution uh, brought before them uh, in a, an emergency meeting next week to provide an additional $50,000 in assistance. The money will be used to pay for hot meals like these, which vary daily. They're a big help to many, like bartender April Bello, who was laid off last week along with her husband, leaving them struggling to pay their bills and feed their two kids. It's gut-wrenching, you know, because you do everything, you know, some people work paycheck to paycheck, you know, or day to day when you make tips as a bartender. So to have no food in your home is just, it's, it's scary. It could be weeks or even months until April and other hospitality employees go back to work. Even with a bare bones operation and city grants, it won't be easy to keep this up. So Rodney is asking for the public's help. If you'd like to help laid off restaurant workers during the COVID-19 pandemic, you're asked to donate whatever you can afford. To find out how to donate, volunteer, or pick up a free meal, visit hospitalityhelpinghands.org. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB TV. Marcus Laws spends a lot of his time walking around West Palm Beach talking to people who may be homeless. Uh, you got somewhere that you're staying right now? No, I'm not. Okay. I ain't never been like this. As the city's new homeless services coordinator working within the Department of Housing and Community Development, Marcus is tasked with finding out who needs help and how to match individuals with available programs and services. To make sure that 
all, all agencies within the city of West Palm Beach and Greater Palm Beach County are working together efficiently and effectively in serving a uh, homeless population. His appointment is one of the ways Mayor Keith James is addressing the issue of homelessness, partnering with local nonprofits and businesses to provide services for homeless people and to reach the people who need those services. At the top of the list, assistance in finding affordable housing. I ain't done nothing. I ain't did nothing. Marcus helps clients by finding out what services they qualify for due to low income, disability, veteran status, or a variety of other options, and then helping them apply for those services if they agree to do so. Sometimes, Marcus says, those who could use help aren't ready to accept it, especially if they're substance abusers or suffering from mental illness or have been homeless for a long time. I mean, it's something to think about, you know. Even when they do agree to apply for housing, there may be nothing available right away. The city is planning to build more affordable housing developments, like the newly opened Georgian Gardens, as well as upcoming supportive housing for people with medical and mental health issues. Still, even when there is housing available, Marcus says convincing some of those who've been on the streets for a long time to accept his help is never easy. Ask something you're interested in, want to want to try out. I'll give you a call. Give me a call? Okay. You do need a lot of empathy. You do need a lot of patience in order to do this. Um, I find more important than either one of those is an imagination because you have to be able to see beyond what somebody looks like and what they're going through and see a person that is, needs help and remember that's somebody's child and then be able to show them love. Marcus developed that empathy, patience, and imagination in part because of his own firsthand experiences. When I graduated from college, I was homeless for a period, sleeping in my car. And perhaps because he's never forgotten what that was like, Marcus is especially careful to show respect to those he deals with, no matter what their circumstances may be. He's going to help you get off the street? Yeah, alcoholism, you know, AA, whatnot. I'm not gonna lie, I did. I done heroin like yesterday. Yeah. But I, I'm get, I'm gonna get there one day. I know. I, I know I'm gonna be clean one day. I know. His clients don't have to go it alone, and Marcus doesn't either, because the city is teaming up with nonprofits like Mental Health America, which provides psychological counseling right on the street, and local homeless advocate The Lord's Place, which offers a variety of services. In part because of their efforts, homelessness in West Palm Beach is already down 24 percent. But it's a complex issue, with some winding up on the streets because of drug or alcohol addictions, others due to abusive relationships, still others because incomes haven't kept up with the high cost of housing in South Florida. Marcus says he knows there is a lot of work to be done, but he and his partners will be right there to do it. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. They came from all over the state and across the country. Thank you all of you for being here with us. Welcome to our march. Hundreds of protesters, led by a nonprofit human rights organization called Coalition of Immokalee Workers, on a 10 day tour of several cities ending right here in South Florida. We came from the University of Notre Dame to support uh, immigrant farm workers. Their primary mission to get fast food giant Wendy's to sign the so called Fair Food Program aimed at stopping abuse of farm workers like unpaid overtime and dangerous conditions in the fields. They're also asking for an extra penny a pound for produce to be paid directly to farm workers like these. We're here to get Wendy's to pay a penny more for the people who are working in the fields. McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell and Subway have already signed on, but not Wendy's. Wendy's would rather pay Mexican farmers to grow their tomatoes in worse labor conditions than to pay local farmers and workers a fair wage. So after rallying in West Palm Beach, the group headed out, led by 87-year-old wheelchair-bound Ethel Kennedy, Robert F. Kennedy's widow. We can hear it for Mrs. Ethel Kennedy. Yay! They walked past the convention center, Wendy. through downtown West Palm Beach and across the Flagler Bridge, Boy, cut, Wendy. winding up on ultra-upscale Palm Beach Island, where Wendy's board chairman, billionaire Nelson Peltz, has a home, and where protesters were met by some local supporters. A good deal of curiosity, incredulous stares, and occasional hostility. This is really sad. Come on, come on. Really come on. sad. 
And so it went down County Road to Swanky Worth Avenue, past exclusive shops and galleries. To a closing rally in a park along the Intracoastal. Organizers say they'd originally been denied a permit and had to sue the town of Palm Beach for permission to march here. It's not yet clear if they'll get the results they were hoping for. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB TV. As Hurricane Dorian approached, heavy rain hit shuttered and boarded up homes and businesses all over West Palm Beach. With signs at the Category 5 storm devastating the Bahamas was headed straight to us, Mayor Keith James activated the city's emergency operations center located in Fire Station 5. In recent history, there have been few threats as significant as the threat that Hurricane Dorian poses to our city at this moment. Once the emergency operations center was activated, the action was nonstop, 24 hours a day. Firefighters responded to medical emergencies as well as accidents on rain slick roads. City workers assigned to the EOC assume special roles for the duration of the storm, some spending several days and nights here, sleeping on cots and air mattresses, eating meals prepared by host firefighters. The people that have been moved into our station, we try to invite them in like family. We try to have them be part of our meals, be a part of our conversations. Assistant Fire Chief Brent Bloomfield, who is also EOC manager, coordinates everything that goes on here once it's activated, including keeping everyone on their toes. So we need to make sure that we stay prepared and we stay vigilant and we make sure that we just keep doing what we're doing, which is preparing for the storm. An extra contingent of police officers was based in the EOC temporarily as part of beefed up patrols to try to prevent crimes of opportunity. We're going to have a robust number of officers out in the field, not only answering emergency uh, service calls, but also looking for anyone that may think that this is an opportunity to commit crimes. In this room, workers who normally perform very different duties fielded calls to the mayor's hotline from worried residents. Good afternoon, city of West Palm Beach. You've been here four days. Four days here, yeah. And you slept here? Yes, we slept here. Eight. So how was that? Uh, it's been an experience. It's the first time that I rode out a storm here, and everyone was very great, and they fed us, and they took care of us really good. City budget manager Linda McDermott was one of two finance chiefs serving rotating shifts for the duration of the storm. The two section chiefs kept an eye on costs and made sure forms required by FEMA were filled out properly so the city could be reimbursed for some storm-related expenses. All the finance ability to make procurement um, and get our money back from FEMA. And when it finally became clear that Hurricane Dorian would remain offshore as it headed north, sparing our city, the focus shifted to helping our neighbors in the islands with this police-led drive to gather and deliver supplies to the hurricane-ravaged Bahamas. Sergeant Matias and I are going to be taking our uh, private vessels over this weekend and, uh, and bring some of these supplies over as much as possible. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV.